Another day, another workout. Today it's uh, back and shoulders. Well, not today. Uh, it's a workout recorded from last night. So in yesterday's video, I said I was going to work out at night, but not included in yesterday's video. I think I'm going to do staggered uploads, which uh, is I'm going to uh, post yesterday's workout the next day. And uh, it just uh, allows me to sleep better if when I, I usually work out after six and then after that to edit and then upload uh, and waiting for all of that usually ends up taking around uh, two hours three two three hours or so and then plus I got to eat and then sleep and then I have a day job so um yeah from now onwards I'm going to uh, upload the day before his workout um, yesterday I was feeling a lot of supersets, wanted to go really heavy, really focus on hypertrophy. A um, lot of uh, cable stuff, uh, some interesting exercises that I think you guys will like. I'll explain um, you guys through why I'm doing each movement. There is a lot of stuff in here that I think has really helped me build a really good physique. And... Um, yeah, uh, I, there's some posing at the end too, uh, so if you want to stick around and watch that at the end. Um, yeah, it's going to be the same. Uh, this time it's going to be voiceovers through the, uh, through the workout. Uh, in the future, I'm planning on uh, recording audio during my workouts. Um, I find that that would be a lot more natural than... Uh, voiceovers. I think uh, listening to my thoughts and uh, hearing the grunts and stuff adds a little bit of... Uh, there are certain things that go through my mind during the workout and certain feelings that I don't think can be replicated uh, by uh, recording after. So um, I just have to figure out an efficient system by which I can record during a workout. All the microphones that I used, sometimes they record during, sometimes they don't, and it's uh, really annoying. Um, but yeah, uh, keep watching. And like the video, if you like the video, comment what you think, and subscribe. This first exercise is... Uh, single arm uh, lat pull down superset with uh, single arm shoulder press the key thing that I want this is a very standard exercise but uh, and no one's necessarily doing it wrong but uh, from a bodybuilding perspective uh, there are certain things that I want to point out as far as how I perform the movement that I think um, uh, could help you build uh, aesthetic physique so the first thing you'll notice is as I'm leaning forward or as, I, as the weight goes up, this angle is better. So just take a look. So you see I'm leaning forward and having my head uh, go in front of my uh, hand. And I'm also rotating my wrist. If you pay attention to my lats, uh, you'll see that there's a stretch so if I went just around uh, if I didn't lean my head forward the amount of stretch that the lats uh, has is a little lesser than um, what I would get by doing uh, this instead if you notice a lot of uh, classic bodybuilders or uh, just physique athletes that have uh, really uh, beautiful physiques where the lats connect into the obliques that look i believe is attained by focusing on movements like this where you're focusing on the full stretch of the lat the lat uh, inserts kind of at the base of uh, the hip and so having a really developed chain so by uh, stretching it all the way through you're able to develop um, that look where uh, you have a wide back that seems to slowly funnel into a narrow waist 
So I like to superset uh, pushes and pulls. Um, so in this case, I'm doing a, a vertical pull uh, superset with a vertical push. Uh, the reason for doing this is most pushes have uh, antagonistic uh, muscle groups to the pull. So in a pull, the muscles that are being used primarily are the lats, uh, biceps, uh, rear delts, rhomboids, everything. Uh, everything has, so everything that pulls towards you is uh, kind of at the back of you and then everything that you push away kind of is in the front of you except for like biceps and triceps which are um, the opposite. Um, so the reason for doing uh, shoulder presses when uh, uh, are supersetting it is so when uh, push movement since they use the opposing muscle groups the back gets to rest uh, so the shoulder pushing the upward push the same mo motion is not working or the same muscles are not working when you're doing uh, the lat pull down um, except for the forearm and the forearm is going to be used in pretty much everything uh, when you hold uh, hold on to something Anyway, the re by doing this, by supersetting movements back to back, you're able to keep your heart rate high. Um, this allows you to have a sort of a mini cardio experience that your body has. Your body has the same adaptations as if it were having a mini car or some sort of cardio experience than if you were to just um, work out and uh, take rest. I believe in doing a lot of supersets. I believe uh, supersets have been really key in uh, helping me stay lean while putting on muscle. Uh, the key drivers of hypertrophy are um, overall volume, metabolic stress, and um, the weight applied. So. Uh, what is uh, metabolic stress? Metabolic stress is that feeling of a pump where you feel like your muscles are inflated and you want, like it could explode. That, that's what metabolic stress is. Movements such as, um, so for example, if you do a lot of deadlifts, you're not necessarily going to get that same pump feeling as doing a bunch of rows. Uh, so it's uh, the reason I say that is I want you to understand what the concept of metabolic stress is uh, to load the metabolic stress portion of things you want to do things that are high reps uh, not always high reps you could also do like drop sets where you start off heavy five uh, heavy weight for five then a lighter weight for 10 so on and so forth you can also do things like superset where you uh, like for example in this case um, I'm doing a lat pull down to a shoulder press um, and then going back and taking minimal rest by taking minimal rest is another way you can uh, overload that uh, uh, metabolic stress system um, but, uh, but yeah if you have uh, uh, every set in this, uh, I've, so like the first two sets, I believe I went uh, the same weight. I kept the shoulder uh, exercise weight uh, the same. And I'm not necessarily trying to hit failure on the shoulder press, but I am trying to hit failure on uh, the lat pull downs. Uh, that's another way I like to pair things is the one that is supersetted might be lighter but the main movement or what I consider the main movement for this exercise I'm going to go heavy on um, so, uh, the, uh, so back to my point about what are the key drivers of hypertrophy or muscle growth so the first uh, one of the things that I mentioned was metabolic stress but metabolic stress alone is not enough to build big muscles you need to signal to your body that uh, you are someone that deals with heavy load what does dealing with heavy load mean for example if you're someone that only carries around um, I don't know 
a purse uh, with nothing or may maybe with like your wallet or something and that's all you ever carry and the rest of the time you walk your body sees no purpose in having to uh, have uh, thick bones or thick muscles so to signal to your mo body that you have to build uh, thicker bones thicker muscles you have to use load that is within reason so within reason of your current capability and then overload it uh, enough to so this is where it's like the five to eight rep region uh, is where you can do this safely is where you can give a significantly heavy stimulus to trigger a high uh, growth hormone response and uh, signal to your body to have thicker muscles thicker bones so on and so forth um, and then going to the third driver of hypertrophy which is overall vo volume so how much weight you lift uh, within a workout so for example if you go too heavy too often uh, something uh, called CNS fatigue happens which is y you start just feeling sluggish and you're not able like a lot of powerlifting workouts are short because you have to just give it your all for about 30 minutes lift five by five maybe do some accessory work and leave that's because by doing a lot of heavy uh, heavy load you uh, exhaust your CNS um, but by not always hitting failure but by hitting failure some of the time you're able to maintain uh, higher levels of I guess CNS uh, health or CNS uh, less exhausted uh, for during the week or during your workouts uh, doing this you're able to achieve an overall heavier or uh, greater volume within a workout than just doing 5x5 five five. Um, for example doing 5x5s uh, five five, um, like let's say 5 pounds or no, 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 let's say you did 100 pounds and it's really heavy for you, but you can only get 5 reps for it. That's 500 pounds uh, lifted within that set. But if you were to go into, um, uh, let's say you did uh, 60, but you could get uh, 15 reps. Ah, I forget the math. Okay, let's... Uh, let's hold on to that thought let me talk about this exercise for a second so uh, in this exercise uh, I'm trying uh, so again I'm hitting one arm at a time but now I'm alternating uh, I'm trying to do a slightly different stimulus it forces one lat to be in the stretched position while the other one is working um, and I superset this with uh, dual shoulder presses so keeping with the theme so the other one was a vertical pull down a single hand vertical pull down um, and a single hand vertical push upwards and uh, a dual, then now a dual alternating uh, vertical pull and a dual alternating vertical push um, but going back to the earlier concept of total volume lifted within a workout. So total volume lifted within a workout. So let's say you're trying to bench uh, and you're trying to max out. Uh, or let's say even you're trying to do three reps. Once you've done your three or four working sets of three, you're usually really exhausted. And so let's say even if you're doing, um, let's say 200 pounds for three reps, uh, that's 600 pounds lifted within um, that set. So 200, wait, am I gonna, yeah, 200 pounds times three reps, 600 uh, pounds, and then let's say you did three sets of that, so three by three, you've lifted now 1,800 pounds within your set. Uh, if instead you chose, now this is purely from a hypertrophy standpoint, not from a strength standpoint. But let's say instead you chose to do uh, 100 pounds instead, but now you can get um, 10 reps and you can do 5 sets of that. That's uh, 
thousand reps per set and uh, five sets which is five thousand pounds so it's a combination of all of these you need to blend in um, enough heavy work enough uh, volume and enough uh, work that gives you the pump uh, attacking uh, hypertrophy from all these three angles um, is what will give you the best results um, as far as these uh, single arm pull downs go some of the same concepts apply as what I said about the earlier exercise where you're trying to get your head in between the elbows of uh, between both your elbows uh, that gives you the best stretch and then um, uh, I'm also on my knees uh, while performing the movement uh, uh, I uh, so that was so being on my knees allows me to stay vertical um, and I also like to play around with stretching my quads and stuff during other movements I'm a big fan of trying to somehow involve other muscle groups while doing um, a primary muscle group so I might sit in a quad stretch position while doing lat pull downs or I might sit in a half lunge while doing shoulder presses just to keep things interesting just to force my body to work in different angles and uh, this is uh, just another angle I think I believe I started going heavier here so each set I am going heavier and um, pretty much trying to squeeze out as many reps as possible um, yeah when going heavy I remember having this thought yesterday um, hard workouts they can suck but you have to kind of draw a line in the sand or become a different person uh, at least momentarily uh, when I grab on to heavy weight um, there is almost uh, this moment before the lift where I come to terms with the fact that I come to terms with what's going to happen to my body and when that thought comes in something happens mentally where there's a rush of endorphins where yeah you're that badass and then uh, when you're in that state you can do a lot more than um, yeah a lot more than what you thought you could do so always if things are heavy things are difficult or if you're feeling too exhausted instead of wallowing in how difficult the thing is uh, start start trying to psych yourself out uh, it doesn't always have to be music sometimes it can just be uh, badass thoughts in which you position yourself as the hero of some sort of story or you're some sort of badass in a situation or make something up uh, and just push through the workout I've been taking minimal rest throughout this whole workout and I, d I honestly only take 20 to 30 seconds uh, rest between uh, most sets uh, this next set is my final set um, I go full stack in on both hands uh, it's hard to see uh, you'll see it after I come off but um, I was trying to get an angle where you could see both stacks move I thought it would be kind of cool to uh, be able to see that but um, you know unfortunately not but uh, one cool thing that did come out of this is you'll notice as I lean forward you can see the striations in the Christmas tree area so yeah all this leaning forward stretching and all of that really helps accentu accentuate these characteristics um, so here what I do is I'm really struggling here to pull these things down and I'm actually using my legs to keep me on the floor because the machine is pulling me up I think I get about 
uh, five reps on each hand and then after that um, reduce the load uh, by about half and then just bang out as many reps as I could. Um, so this is an example of a drop set uh, where so by going that heavy I am getting that heavy stimulus that I was talking about that hey I am a guy that lifts heavy weight stimulus that you're trying to give your body that forces your body to become thicker and uh, bigger then by reducing the weight and keeping on going I'm able to then attack my muscles through the metabolic stress angle which is getting the pump uh, getting that feeling of you can't really bend your muscles anymore uh, you can't really move your bones anymore you can't really move your arms your all of that um, that feeling of your muscles are going to expand uh, really push if you can't get four reps um, like cheat a little bit if you have to um, yeah like here I'm I've started cheating a little to just get as many as much more blood as possible into the lats and just because uh, it was a drop set doesn't mean you get to not do the shoulder presses immediately sh uh, superset into the shoulder presses. Um, I haven't really been giving too many pointers about the shoulder presses. Uh, I don't think there is too much that I can add to it. Maybe I'll think of something at a different time. Just make sure you're going through full range of motion. I like see my elbow sinks real low. Most people stop around 90 degrees. I think you have to go through full ranges of motion to get the best gains. This is uh, a row. So sometimes I, I guess what I like to call it is a uh, freestyle. Um, so there are a lot of exercises that so in the moment uh, I'm I have like I'll be flexing and I'll have certain feelings about my body and I really want to feel certain muscles contract so I'll start playing around with the angles of cable machines and uh, lean certain ways and see how it feels on my back here by holding one side in place I'm working the isometric of uh, one side and while rotating I'm able to get kind of a rotational stretch into my lats I'm supersetting that with uh, upright rows on the cable and then I'll try set that with the uh, upright rows on the uh, kettlebells. Um, again, reason for supersetting, build up uh, metabolic stress. Uh, I did the drop sets for my back and I felt like that was pretty pumped and I wanted to do something similar for my shoulders. Uh, so by supersetting this time, uh, the same muscle groups uh, back to back I'm able to get uh, better or not better but uh, get that metabolic stress stimulus into the shoulders the upright row is really good for the medial delts or the side delts in my opinion it's been the exercise that has uh, gotten me the best gains um, having wide shoulders uh, or that sho are those shoulders that stick out along with a big back is what gives you a really good V taper. Um, one thing you'll notice while I'm doing uh, the kettlebell upright rows is I'm looking away from the dumbbell that I'm rowing. So a lot of people have trouble where they don't feel upright rows in their traps um, or in their uh, delts rather and feel it too much in their traps by looking away from the side that you're doing the upright row it forces your trap to be in a stretched position by keeping your trap in a stretched position while rowing it decreases its involvement in uh, the upright row 
and so you're able to isolate your uh, show your deltoid better and take the trap out of the equation um, this movement is something I want you to pay attention to it like again I'm freestyling the row so if you notice I'm leaning and then rowing leaning and then rowing if you pay attention I'm doing that same concept of having the head come in between the elbows this forces the lats to be fully stretched and by doing kind of this uh, good morning slash stiff leg deadlift motion I'm able to incorporate my hamstrings glutes my entire posterior chain in one movement a lot of good people uh, are a lot of people with good physiques have um, uh, have this flowy look to them where their rear delts seem to connect into their uh, serratus and lats and then their lats seem to connect into their hips if you notice uh, Arnold he had it if you notice people today like David Lade they have it um, and then at the end I did uh, like these low rows and uh, to really uh, get a feeling in the lower lats the part that has the Christmas tree so again same superset doing upright rows to um, the uh, upright rows to the kettlebell upright rows cable upright rows to so kettlebell upright rows and um, you with the upright rows one of the things I'm trying to do is your elbow should be pointed your elbow should be above uh, your shoulder when you're done um, at the end of the motion your elbow should be above the shoulder and with your hands you almost want to uh, have this uh, angle of your pouring a teapot or uh, pouring a teapot and pouring tea from a teapot into a cup is that a tongue twister anyway so um, that's what you want to visualize uh, when you're doing the motion and um, like that elbow having the elbow above the shoulder part is really key to have uh, to get the most um, contraction out of the upright rows the other thing you want to pay attention to is um, well you can also do the looking away or looking the opposite side on the cable as well and uh, the other thing is you so you see how I'm bringing my arm forward uh, instead of rowing from the side having the resistance start in front of you versus behind you uh, will help you build um, a better better look uh, or how do I say this to get better contraction out of your medial delt right if you if your goal is to get contraction of the medial delts then your hands need to start in front of uh, your legs at least in my opinion I'm not saying that you can't involve the medial delts uh, by pulling it from the side but um, what you uh, to get the most out of the movement you want it starting in front of you um, again uh, so now you can see I'm doing uh, rows again but at a slightly different angle slightly different tempo by staying in that bent position I'm able to make it more of a vertical pull and by pulling it that like uh, almost to my knees I'm able to uh, hit more of the lower lats and the Christmas tree area uh, or that's at least what I'm able to connect it when I do it uh, in my mind and uh, then um, so essentially for this set the idea was um, I've been going heavy on my uh, back let's go a little lighter and focus and focus more on the metabolic stress aspect of the back and get the muscles activated and then with the shoulders while I'm not necessarily going heavy by supersetting two exercises back to back for shoulders 
I'm able to give it uh, a lot of uh, that lactic threshold metabolic uh, stress activation and um, yeah and also I'm supersetting all three back to back I think my heart rate uh, so I'm always tracking my heart rate with my watch it's, it was around 120 to 130 on average uh, for most of the workout and that's because I'm just supersetting these movements back to back and the shoulder or the back is a huge muscle group and also the shoulder works uh, in unison with a lot of other muscles so by supersetting two pretty major muscle groups it forces a lot of blood to go into uh, into them and that's what creates the cardiovascular uh, stress and you're able to have a little cardio session while lifting so that you don't have to do a lot of cardio later. So yeah, after this I have uh, a shoulder press to row on the landmine. Um, I like the shoulder press on the landmine uh, because it, you see how I'm moving with the weight it allows me to get just that little bit more of um, uh, of a contraction, just that little bit more of a range of motion that gives me a deeper stretch, better activation of the shoulder, a better range of motion, healthier joints. Um, Twenty. Uh, so this angle, you can see it better. I'm like you see that little lean that I do. It forces the anterior delt to stretch a little bit more and uh, gives you a better development of the shoulder um, and makes you less prone to injuries. If you ever go super heavy or anything like that and you're stuck at the bottom, uh, that's usually where a lot of pec tears happen, uh, bite or shoulder tears. By uh, exposing your uh, joints to those deep ranges of motion you make yourself uh, more protected against uh, heavy movements and uh, less susceptible to injury. I'm supersetting the shoulder presses with uh, one arm rows. I think a lot of people do the t-bar rows and stuff on um, the landmine. I really prefer doing um, the single arm variation of it. Uh, I feel like with the two arm version, I don't really get uh, as good of the contraction than I can from like cables or something, so I see no point in it. But the single arm version, um, I'm able to get a really good contraction in the lower lats and. Uh, have uh, ha see that l uh, leaning forward slightly curved position try that out while doing your back exercises your rows and things like that what you'll notice is uh, you'll feel your body um, work more as a system and uh, do if you do it long enough you'll have a much more flowy look of your physique the shoulder presses and the rows again kind of following the same theme uh, single arm presses to single arm rows um, at this point my body's already pretty fatigued so I can't go super heavy so I did like uh, 6 uh, 12 sets already so far and including all the super sets of uh, all the things done in, uh, done before this exercise um, my muscles are really stressed already and so now I'm just trying to get as all those little bits extra crumbs of uh, reps and volume that I can um, uh, the reps don't necessarily have to always be pretty uh, there is you have to be a little bit of both. You can't always be the mobility guy who's stretching around and never really goes heavy and uh, you can't always be the guy that wants to lift really heavy and 
doesn't really take care of the other stuff. Um, by combining both of those, you're able to achieve more complete fitness. And um, trust me, there are quite a few people that I've seen that are incredibly fit or look fit, but uh, have struggle moving up stairs or uh, there are certain things they can't do and it's really silly like how do you look like that but complain about uh, regular movements so I dis uh, I personally dislike being like that and um, I choose to work my body out in a more all-rounded way um, to give me a physique uh, which is well-rounded, balanced, and proportionate, and also allows me to traverse through regular life uh, without uh, having to worry about uh, doing certain motions or, oh, I can't pick this up because my back is sore and stuff like that. Speaking of back and sore, um, pause, but uh, speaking of back and sore, uh, there's some lower back and uh, core stuff that I'll be showing earlier or uh, later. So even while doing the shoulder presses, uh, I play around with uh, some of like my feet positioning and see how the rest of my body uh, behaves when I do certain things like that. So does my core get activated different? So as you can see, I'm like trying to rotate a little bit more, trying to sink a little bit more trying to activate my obliques and abs a little bit of uh, my stabilizing muscles um yeah try uh, try to incorporate mobility into hypertrophy um, mobility doesn't have to be its own thing hypertrophy doesn't have to be its own thing um uh, you it can be both um figure out uh, so, I mean, at least I'm showing you guys some ideas, but if the, hopefully this gives you some other, gives someone who's watching ideas to experiment, figure out ways in which you can make uh, regular weight training exercises have somewhat of a mobility twist to it. And uh, you'll not only notice yourself have a more flowy physique, but also have um, uh, better experience moving around and living life. This next exercise is a seal row. It's something that I'm a huge fan of but uh, don't do often. Mostly because it's kind of annoying to set it up but Essentially, uh, this is a decline bench and I have one side raised up so that I can lay flat on it uh, such that the dumbbells are suspended off the floor when my lats are fully stretched. Um, this is a really good isolation exercise for your lat. And so this is kind of where there's a little bit of uh, hypocrisy maybe on my part where all this time I've been talking about mobility and uh, don't isolate and yada 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 but uh, from a bodybuilding perspective but I also said uh, don't always be mobility and don't always be the guy that's lifting heavy weights and don't always be a bodybuilder which is what I didn't say that last time but that's uh, what I'm going to say now but I'm also going to say sometimes you got to be a bodybuilder um, to build an aesthetic physique um, isolation has its place and uh, what I'm trying to do with seal rows at least for me personally I really feel it around the Christmas tree area uh, I'm a huge fan of having a good striated Christmas tree if you guys don't know what a Christmas tree is and what the hell is this guy talking about uh, when you have really well developed lower lats and lats in general and they become and you get to the low body fat percentages you end up getting <coughs> uh, these striations in your muscle that form a sort of pattern on your back that look uh, like a Christmas tree. 
And if you don't know what that is, uh, just Google Christmas tree back bodybuilding and you'll see something. Um, yeah, this is just another different angle. Um, just some pointers about this. Try to keep your back flat. Um, it's okay to lean back a little with your upper uh, with your upper body or your upper upper body, like your thoracic area. Um, this uh, I, fi I find that doing that a little at the end of the rep allows me to get a deeper contra uh, contraction and really get uh, that full like deep contraction of that lower lat area like mentally I just feel the lines just building up as I'm doing these uh, exercises um, this is kind of a repeat exercise I couldn't really think of any shoulder exercise to do I thought I could do rear delts uh, superset with uh, seal rows but I want to save uh, rear delts for chest day. Um, I like supersetting my dumbbell presses and uh, with the rear delts. Uh, it it gives me a good pump for whatever reason. I like supersetting. Uh, and also, after a lot of pushes, uh, allowing or doing the rear delt allows to kind of reset that. And for the final set, I just did one arm at a time. Um, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I always like to throw in some exclusive uh, one arm movements because I feel like my right lat is bigger than my left lat. So I do a few extra, le uh, f I actually do a few extra reps on the left side. Um, it's kind of difficult to maintain balance um, when doing this so hold on to the front of the bench if you have to to keep yourself uh, on the bench while rowing um, but yeah go to failure it's n now it's near the end of the workout don't really save yourself give yourself to your workout give yourself like now it's the time to exhaust this is the final exercise, exhaust everything you got. And then after this, uh, we'll move to abs. So with abs, um, I don't really have a routine in the sense that I don't uh, do like regular sets and reps. I mean, sometimes I do. Um, but uh, I just come up with uh, different difficult exercises and do it. So. If you're a beginner, or even in some cases intermediate, you probably don't have this range of motion or strength in your abs. So be careful. I would recommend starting off with a decline bench before doing this. These are Roman chair sit-ups. Um, I find them to be extremely effective for me. It fully stretches out your lat. Again, you, one thing you'll notice is I'm big on stretching, uh, full stretches, full, um, full ranges of motion, and doing just those little bits extra to get a deeper stretch. I'm then supersetting uh, similar to the concept of shoulders to back or lats to shoulders or whatever. I'm uh, doing antagonistic uh, muscle groups. So a crunch, which is the forward core or the abs, the rectus abdominis, um, and all of that. Uh, superset with a lower back, which is on the complete opposite side of those exact muscles. Um, then for the second set, I add a little twist to it. So I add a single arm shoulder press along with the, uh, sit up. What this does is, uh, forces the opposing side, uh, oblique to get activated, um, to uh, maintain balance, center of, uh, gravity, etc., etc., etc and um, uh, forces the shoulder and chest to be activated. It is not necessarily a all-out shoulder exercise because you're not going to the point of failure, or, but it is being activated. Um, and then again, superset with uh, back extensions on the same thing. Um, 
I even with the back extensions I'll play around with uh, one arm variations alternate variations if there are variations of a movement I will try and find it and do every variation possible not within the same workout but uh, over <laughs> the course of time and uh, as you can see I'm holding in a like a half curl and then I'll switch hands doing all these things uh, forces your core your body to get uh, activated and work in every angle and fashion possible to it and it and it not only makes you look good, but makes you overall a beast of an athlete. Um, uh, this is another <laughs> variation. This is, again, if you're uh, a beginner or intermediate, you probably aren't going to be doing this. But um, for the freaks out there, um, try this out. It's uh, I came up with this yesterday, and it shredded my obliques that's for sure shredded my obliques shredded my core uh, really good activation of the abs uh, what I'm trying to focus on is trying to lean in a little bit into the side uh, that I'm going down on um, yeah it uh, any so the concept is when you get to the bottom play around uh, see if you if you rotate a little does your muscle stretch a little bit more uh, if you um yeah if you like twist your wrist a little bit does it stretch a little bit more uh, if you put one hand out or one hand behind your back does it you get a little bit more of a stretch by trying all these little variations you will notice that your body works as a chain quite a bit uh, a slight variation of a muscle group or a muscle on a very different side of the body can have a profound effect on how a stretch feels on the muscle that you're working on um, this is the final set I uh, again back extensions you'll see uh, that I have one leg off the pad in the back so I'm trying to do like a one arm, one leg kind of thing, but I think I kind of give up on it because it started feeling a little awkward. Um, but again, uh, I point that out because you don't have to be married to this concept of, oh, I can only do one kind of back extension or, uh, oh, if I failed one variation, that's the end of the world. No, just find a different variation and do it. Uh, the goal is to work your muscle and every exercise has a purpose. I finished off by doing some posing uh, at the gym. I'm with posing I don't do like the regular I mean I do do the regular double bicep and stuff but I'm a huge fan of artistic posing, um, like classic physique, what Frank Zane used to do, um, unconventional, like not the front double bicep, not the back, although those, those aren't bad poses, but there's something about posing like a sculpture or what an artist would, uh, a sculpture that an artist would build, um, really trying to accentuate so for example in this particular instance that look that's not you can't look or uh, display that look with the regular poses and also throughout the workout you notice uh, you d if you notice my lat and how it inserts into the side of the abs that's what I'm trying to build when I'm leaning forward and doing the rows when I'm trying to yeah, you see how my lat inserts into the lower abs almost, or at least gives that illusion. That's what I'm trying to accomplish with the different kinds of rows that I'm doing. It might look silly, it might look unconventional, but at least it's, uh, from my perspective, it's been working and it's been giving me the look that I've been uh, striving for. Um, as I look at my physique, I think I look 
pretty freaking aesthetic and um, if I had to make a few like I guess the things that I want to work on now is I want a little bit bigger biceps I think that would give me a better look and also I don't know for whatever reason I want uh, really big forearms I took the hat off here so again use your uh, use your personality, use your characteristics to accentuate uh, your pictures, your physique. Uh, by having the hair in front of my face, I'm able to give a distressed, sad boy look, kind of, <laughs> that uh, gives an interesting look to the photo, to the model, to the picture. Um, this is a back pose that I love. Uh, it's like a thinker pose, but uh, back dominant. And yeah, side tricep. But yeah, like, uh, share, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Ciao.